In the days that Nebuchadnezzar ruled over the land of Babylon, he had taken into captivity the children of Judah. Among the Judeans were men of wisdom, whom the king brought into the palace for their learned abilities. One of these wise men was a man of God named Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar trusted Daniel and valued his judgment in many difficult matters that came before his rule. When Nebuchadnezzar died, his son Belshazzar took his place as king. Belshazzar ruled as a foolish young man whose only interest was in worldly pleasure. He made no plans to defend his kingdom and spent his time having large banquets for his lords and princes. On the eve of one of the king's many celebrations in the great meeting, a strange event took place. Look, look, suddenly, out of nowhere, the hand of a man appeared and began to write strange words on the wall before the king. None of his wise men could understand the lettering. And so it was, with a fearful heart, that Belshazzar cried out to them, Whoever tells me the meaning of this writing shall be clothed in a scarlet robe and wear a gold chain around his neck. He will be a powerful ruler in my kingdom. All of the king's wise men came to look at the strange writing, but none could tell Belshazzar what it meant. Then his mother, the queen, came into the room. Do not be troubled, my son. I know of one man who could tell you the answer to this mystery. His name is Daniel, and he has the wisdom of the gods. I remember your father used him to interpret dreams and to settle some very difficult arguments. And so, Daniel was brought before the court of Belshazzar. The king found it hard to believe that this simple man possessed such great power. I have heard that the spirit of the gods is in you. If you can tell me the meaning of those words on the wall, you'll be well rewarded and become a ruler in this kingdom. Let your rewards be for someone else. I will tell you the meaning of those words. But hear me first. You have not humbled yourself before the Lord, Belshazzar, and have worshipped false gods. You and your princes have made a mockery of the Lord's work on this earth. And so he has written this message to you. God states that soon your kingdom will fall to invaders, and you, O king, will be killed. Even though Daniel's words foretold disaster, the king ordered his servants to clothe Daniel in scarlet and place a gold chain around his neck. Then he proclaimed to all his people that Daniel would rule over part of the kingdom. took Daniel's warning lightly though, and continued with the banquet. But while they were making merriment and cheer, enemy soldiers had silently surrounded the city. Suddenly, Babylon was attacked. Belshazzar and his drunken army were unprepared for battle and quickly fell prey to the soldiers. of Daniel in his wisdom and made sure he was spared in the fighting. Darius became the next king of Babylon and sent for Daniel one day. Welcome, Daniel. Let me explain why I brought you here. I have chosen many princes to reign throughout the land and they shall be governed by three rulers. I would be honored to have you as the first ruler. Daniel accepted. And soon King Darius came to rely more upon Daniel than anyone else. In time, the other rulers and princes became jealous of Daniel, and they gathered together to plot against him. One of them proposed a plan. The only way we shall find fault with Daniel is to create some matter of law concerning his God. I have noticed that each day he prays to his God and worships him. Perhaps it would be interesting to make this kind of prayer illegal. Then we could sit back and wait for him to break the law. The other rulers, after much thought, agreed on the wording of the new law, and together they presented it to King Darius. 
My lord, we, the rulers of this kingdom, have created a new law that awaits only your signature to make it legal. It states that all prayers and requests must be sent to you alone. Whoever disobeys this law will be put to death by being thrown into the lion's den. King Darius was pleased with the new law and signed it, unaware that Daniel was not among those who had proposed it. The evil rulers happily departed, knowing that Daniel would surely fall into their trap. It did not take long for Daniel to hear of the new law, but he refused to obey it and continued his prayers to God. But the rulers and princes had assembled themselves outside of Daniel's house and were peering through the open window. Upon seeing Daniel kneeling in prayer, they quickly returned to the king to report the crime they had witnessed. O oh, great king, we have just come from the house of Daniel, where we overheard him praying to his God. Have you not just signed a new law that forbids this? King Darius realized at once that he'd been tricked. Unknowingly, he had signed a law that would bring death to wise old Daniel. If what you say is true, then Daniel must be punished. As much as I would like, I cannot change the law for him. The sentence will be carried out this evening. King Darius tried as hard as he could to find some means of saving Daniel. But when evening came, he knew his efforts had been in vain. The evil rulers returned to make certain the sentence was carried out. Daniel was silently led to the mouth of the lion's den. Inside, the hungry lions were anxiously waiting to be fed. Daniel was thrown into the den, and King Darius spoke to him. Your God, whom you serve so well, he will deliver you. A large stone was rolled over the opening of the den. It was sealed with the king's signet and could not be removed until the next morning. King Darius spent the entire night fasting and praying for Daniel. Early the next morning, the king arose and hurried with his guards to the den fearful of what he might find. The great stone was rolled back, and in a voice filled with fear, the king cried out to Daniel. Speak to me, Daniel. Let me know that your God has kept you safe from the lions. The animals were silent, and King Darius wondered if their hunger had been satisfied, or if a miracle had happened. The king heard a noise. It sounded like footsteps. Suddenly, Daniel walked out from among the peaceful lions. You should not have been afraid, O king, for the power sent an angel who sealed the lions' mouths so that they could not harm me, because I was innocent before God and before you. They quickly lifted Daniel out of the lion's den, and King Darius was happy to see that he was unhurt. Then the king summoned the evil rulers who had deceived him. Daniel has safely returned from the lion's den without a scratch. The power of God is even greater than your lies and trickery. Noble king, we have not tricked you. It is Daniel who is the imposter. Anyone could have done what he did. Anyone, you say? Then let us see if you can produce the same miracle when you are placed in the lion's den. But, my lord, take them away. King <laughs> Darius turned toward Daniel. I am truly sorry for what has happened, but I will make amends. From this day forth, all shall know of the power of your God who has delivered you from the lions. Throughout my kingdom, men will be free to worship God and I will never again challenge that freedom. And so, Daniel and his people lived in peace under the rule of King Darius. And when he died, the new ruler treated Daniel's people with kindness and justice. For he too had heard of the power of God 
and his deliverance of Daniel in the lion's den.